Everyone will come from different walks of life. Your journey won't be like mine, and mine won't be like yours. Different roads lead down different paths. And depending on the roads you choose, it can alter your future, whether that be good or bad. Your road might be illuminated and consist of arrows and directions, while others are forced to wander around in the dark, trying to reach the light. For those on a darker path, Life can be hard. Some even become invisible and silent cries go unnoticed. And when you feel unheard, it becomes necessary to create louder noise. What causes a person to fall completely off the deep end? Maybe it's because someone who's elevated has an offer to hold them up. A common symptom of not understanding is judgment, and in a court of public opinion, all rulings are final. November 30th, 1992. The world would make way for Britney Smith. The place that she would call home would be the state of North Carolina. It would be here that she would receive her upbringing, as well as her education. Brittany is described as a person who was outgoing. If you were down, she would be the person to provide the laughter in your life. She was by all means a genuine person. If she loved you, she loved you with everything she had. In the year of 2008, Brittany would be able to spread that love to one very special person. It would be this year that she would give birth to her first son, who she referred to as her little king, Antonio. Antonio would enter her world when she was only a teenager herself, but she didn't let it get in the way of her schooling. She would ultimately graduate from East Wake High School in the year of 2010. After school, she would focus all of her energy on raising her little king. If she wasn't working, one of her favorite hobbies was spending time with her son and her niece. In the year of 2014, Brittany Smith would start a relationship with a new guy, a guy who goes by the name of Cody. Upon meeting each other, they would realize that they had a lot in common, and they would quickly grow fond of each other. Soon after, they would discover that they were pregnant with a child, a baby girl who they were ready to welcome with open arms into the world. They even had a name picked out for the baby girl. She was to be called Addison Cody Page. But sadly, the baby would never come because Brittany Smith would have a miscarriage and experience one of the hardest times she's ever had in her life. She would hold the memory of her child to be dear in her heart, but continue to stay strong in order to raise her son Antonio. Two years after this tragedy occurred, she would find out that she was pregnant once again. And in the year of 2016, she would welcome a second son into this world, a baby boy in which they named Asher. At this point in her life, everything is going okay for Brittany. She has a boyfriend that loves her. She has two beautiful children. The only gripe that she had about her life at that time is that she wasn't where she wanted to be, but where she was, was making her complete. But by the year of 2020, things were headed down a rocky hill. Brittany Smith had begun associating herself with the wrong people, hanging around the wrong crowd. This change in her life would also eventually lead her to drug use. And by the beginning of year 2021, Brittany Smith and her boyfriend would be down on their luck and living inside of a tent. At this point in her life, her sons were okay. They weren't living in the tent with them. They were with family. And it was just Brittany and her boyfriend against the world. But to make matters worse, while Brittany Smith was living inside of this tent, she was also pregnant. She would come to find out that she was giving birth to another boy, a boy in which they had decided to name Aspen. 
Now, hearing the details that Brittany Smith was living inside of a tent along with her boyfriend and pregnant would make a lot of people question, where was her family? I want to specify that during this point in her life, she wasn't abandoned. Brittany Smith was very much loved. But you also need to understand that she was in love with her boyfriend. And although Brittany Smith had multiple locations that she could have went and stayed at under a shelter with her family, she chose to stay with him because love won't let you abandon your significant other. So she made a decision that if they were going to struggle, they were going to do it together. And this was going to have to be something that they would overcome as a couple. February 5th, 2021. Brittany Smith would be up at 5 a.m. on that morning. She would get up and she would tell her boyfriend that she was headed to the area of Raleigh, North Carolina, in which she would return in a few hours. Time begins to elapse and Brittany doesn't return. And after repeated calls from her boyfriend to her phone and not being able to reach her, by February 6th of 2021, he knew something was wrong and he would immediately report her missing to the authorities. Along with reporting her missing, her boyfriend would let the authorities know that she left with a guy named Clayton Johnson and a girl named Emily. These two people were known drug users in the area, and the first thing the police had to ask is why was she with them? In my opinion, this discovery would immediately turn this investigation biased. When Brittany Smith was initially reported missing, the authorities weren't taking it too serious because of her situation and the circumstances surrounding what happened. In their eyes, Brittany Smith was just another homeless drug user and most likely ran off, probably on a drug binge or up to no good. And at this point in time, urgency on her case was non-existent. Outside of a post made on social media with a flyer with her face on it, there was nothing being done. But instead of waiting on the authorities to kick in the gear, her family and friends would immediately turn to social media in order to spread the word. And when the post began to garner attention, that's when the media got involved and began airing her story that she was missing and can't be found. These posts about 28-year-old Brittany Smith would begin to arise on February 7th of 2021. But even with the media pushing the story out, no one knew anything about her whereabouts. At this point in time, the police have kicked in the gear and they performed a search warrant on the tent that she was staying at, but it didn't turn up any clues. And by nightfall of February 7th of 2021, it was still a mystery. February 8th, 2021. Police have conducted searches of areas. They've knocked on doors, called around to family and friends. But there was no new tips. It seems as if Brittany just vanished right into thin air. But although they had no smoking gun, they did have circumstantial evidence. Upon Brittany Smith disappearing, they would draw up a warrant in order to obtain her cell phone records. And after retrieving the data and cross-referencing her location with that of Clayton and Emily, it was determined that her last known location was in fact with these two people. But at this point in time, Clayton and Emily weren't being cooperative. But to make things worse, social media wasn't buying the story at all. And they weren't pointing the finger at the people that she was with last, but instead pointing the finger at a boyfriend and saying that if something sinister happened, it most likely happened by his hands. February 9th, 2021. An unidentified person would be driving along the Noose River. But on this day, when passing by, the driver would notice something odd inside of the water. The passerby then calls the authorities and reports it. 
Now, it isn't clarified as to why they called the police. I don't know if it was a hunch or maybe someone knew something that they weren't telling. But nonetheless, they report this object to the authorities and they arrive on the scene. Upon arriving on the scene, the authorities would discover a purple suitcase wrapped in black and orange rope. But upon opening the suitcase, there they would find the body of a pregnant female. Upon further inspection, they would come to find a phone cord wrapped around the neck area. They would then analyze the scene and ship the body off to the coroner's office for further testing. A body is found in a suitcase along the Noose River. Now investigators working to learn whether she is a pregnant woman who was reported missing. CBS 17's Holden Kowicki has been covering this story for us today and joins us live with the very latest. Holden. Now, while the identity of the victim has yet to be released, Sheriff Baker confirmed that they had been combing this area throughout the weekend looking for 28-year-old Brittany Simone Smith, a pregnant woman who was last seen Thursday. Smith's family has been here at the scene off and on throughout the day, but Sheriff Baker stopped short of giving them the closure that they're looking for until the body can be properly identified. Look, this is in fact, this is the young lady that we've been looking for uh, all weekend long. Someone is responsible for that. That just doesn't happen. Again, the body was found in a suitcase and Sheriff Baker says that it is safe to call this a homicide and they are investigating it as such. If you have any information that could help investigators, you're being asked to call Raleigh Crime Stoppers. Reporting live in Raleigh, Holden Krewicki, CBS 17 News. Sadly, the body would in fact be identified as 28-year-old Brittany Smith. When the autopsy was performed, it would be concluded that she died due to strangulation. By the next day, on February 10th of 2021, Clayton and Emily would be stopped in a routine traffic stop, but immediately taken into custody. At the time of the arrest, the only evidence that they had was the cell phone data linking them together. And although that's not enough for prosecution to take to trial, it's enough to hold them. But while they're incarcerated, the authorities would draw up a search warrant in order to search their home. The search warrant would in fact pay off. Police would locate an orange and black rope inside of the home. The same type of rope that was tied around the purple suitcase. And if that wasn't enough, they were about to receive a nail in the coffin because Emily's parents would testify that on the morning of February 5th of 2021, she witnessed Clayton and Emily leaving their home armed with a purple suitcase. At this point in time, prosecution has more than they need to take the case to trial, and Emily and Clayton are formally indicted on charges of murder. And by the year of 2023, the trial for both of them would begin. And after a week-long trial, both Emily and Clayton would be found guilty of murder and concealment of a body and be sentenced to life in prison. The prosecution will lay out their theory in court, and they believe that on the morning of February 5th of 2021, Brittany Smith was lured out of her tent by these two. But when she arrived in the car, she thought she was driving to Raleigh, but the murder was already planned. The prosecutors believed that this was most likely done due to a drug debt. They believed that shortly after Brittany Smith entered their vehicle, one of them was driving the car while the other sat in the back seat. And that's when they strangled Brittany. But when they took her life, they weren't only taking her life, they were taking the life of her unborn child, baby Aspen. But to add insult to injury, when the autopsy was concluded, they would also discover that upon her death, she was dilated 2.5 centimeters. A mother's love for her child is something that is unbreakable. And her love was so strong that with the last of her strength, her body was trying to save her unborn child. I'm Brittany's aunt Shonda, and she always called me Aunt Shonda. And um, I just want to say she was a 
beautiful, she was smart, her smile lit up the room, her voice I still hear. As for me, sleeping at night has been very hard because when I close my eyes I think about my niece and what those people did to her and why they did it to her. Firefly, how short is life? I dreamt we had more than 20. This before and I have lived more than plenty. When it was my granddaughter. I love her. I did everything. The family did everything we could to get her to come home. She made some decisions we didn't agree with, but we tried to protect her under those circumstances. I did what I needed to for my child. I would have died for my child. I know sorrow, I know pain. Let them have me if I'm ready. Now the aunt. Y'all have no idea. Y'all have no idea. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end know dark is right because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late, they grieved it on its way, do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. A clear motive to this case will never be known unless the perpetrators themselves decide to tell it. This story is all around tragic, but I'm glad that in the end, the perpetrators who committed this act are serving the rest of their lives in prison, exactly where they belong. Rest in peace, Brittany Smith. Thank you for being a light for others.